This is clearly not the kind of question you might give to your um, young high school students. <laughs> um, so, I don't know whether you guys know, but about uh, 117 years ago, Hilbert came up with 20, um, 23 amazing uh, problems that he thought should interest mathematicians over the next century. Um, some of those were solved within months, and some of those have never been solved. And then uh, in 2000, the Clay Institute, which is a private institute, that supports mathematics. Um, it chose seven problems and attached a $1 million prize to each one of those problems. Many of those are in what we would call pure maths, but a couple of them are in applied, and one of them is about fluids. So this equation, which looks quite complicated, um, some of you may not even remember what all the different symbols in the equation mean, but it is essentially um, force equals mass times acceleration, for a viscous fluid um, flowing through it. And the amusing thing is, this equation is incredibly useful for everything from predicting the weather to understanding um, flight and to understanding um, biological um, effects and so on. But for 200 years, there has been no proof that solutions to this equation exist, or uh, if they exist, that they're smooth. Um, so, some people might say, well, that's no longer a real world, because that's kind of the thing that pure mathematicians worry about, whether the solutions exist or not. The applied mathematicians just put the thing on a computer, and whatever comes out <laughs> is considered to be the solution. Um, so, there are interesting cases of people finding solutions to equations on computers, and then someone coming along and proving that those solutions do not actually exist at all. So. Um, it's, oh, I've kind of typed that wrong. It's not proof of existence and uniqueness. It's proof of existence and smoothness. So some people have found solutions that are very um, horrible and complicated. So anyway, if you've got some bright sparks that are kind of looking to see what can they do to make their name in the world, uh, you can recommend. Um, one of the problems has been solved. So there's only six um, unsolved problems left. Um, so that was my first choice of something um, that would catch the eye. How many people have heard of the clay? Oh, not that computer. Sorry. Um, well spotted. Um, how many people have heard of the clay institute prices before? A fair number, I think. Right. So you can look up what the other um, six problems are. So then I thought, well, what's a really um, real-world problem? Um, these two people, Tong and Dullin. Uh, William Tong is a recent PhD graduate from University of Sydney, and Holger Dunlin is his supervisor who has the office next door to mine. And what they were working on is, can you use mathematics to come up with new dives for the Olympic competitions? And so they recently found a new dive, which is now being officially classified and included in the list of um, With a degree dives, of difficulty. With a degree of difficulty of 4.4 4. 4 or something or other. Um, so, the Olympic dives are made up of two components, a somersault and twists, or several somersaults and twists. And um, just to show you, there are three ways you can stick uh, an axis through a human being. Um, <laughs> and uh, depending on which way you rotate the human being, you get a cartwheel that doesn't occur very much in the Olympic dives, but you get a somersault, which is kind of going that way, and you get a twist, which is kind of going uh, this way, and you'll see that there's one and a half somersaults, and that's because at the end of the dive, normally the head of the diver is at the bottom. Um, they're not landing in the pool um, feet first. So um, this is a quote from William's um, PhD thesis, and uh, he talks about what areas of maths he had to use. So it's basically about some stuff called uh, angular momentum, but it also uses some mathematical stuff called group theory, <coughs> rotations, and things like that. So I didn't write down uh, any of the equations. Um, if you want to make a note, um, you can look at this is a, a recent interview in just uh, recently in March of this year um, with uh, William and um, the others. And so we teach the mathematics that you would need to solve that problem when you get to third year at university. So 
Um, again, um, there are plenty of easy real world problems to do, like blood alcohol content and things like that, but then there's some really interesting real world problems that require high levels of mathematics. So I just thought I would show you those things. It's interesting to know what PhD students are working on in the mathematics space, isn't it? Who would have thought the maths of Olympic diving? <laughs> <laughs>